Felix here, good morning to you. We've got our jobs number, PPI numbers, and I'm a minute late because I was listening to a comedy show. Jamie Dillon on Bloomberg Live was telling us why uh, they didn't benefit from the banking crisis. It had nothing to do with it. They don't want it. And uh, and they're really hoping they don't have to buy another bank and all that sort of thing. And how they basically bought First Republic Bank, well, got gifted First Republic Bank because <laughs> they were trying to help the system. So, yeah, you know, there's some stuff makes you laugh. Uh, Jamie Dillon certainly did that this morning. Um, let me just share with you what the inflation data is before I say this isn't financial advice. No, it's not. Just an old banker sharing with you his views on uh, on life, basically. Uh, so there it is. Facebook group, actually, yes, we're sharing today my six-page trading strategy script. You want to get your hands on that? Go to phoenixfriends.org slash group. Links down below and uh, and get your pause on that. But let's look at this. PPI, producer price inflation. We were expecting 0.1 to 0.3, and we got 0.2. So it's right bang in the middle. It's pretty uneventful. Jobless claims have ticked up, significantly ticked up. That's almost 20,000 people more unemployed than we had hoped for because we are morally vacuous, moribund, evil people who follow the Fed and hope to make money out of it. Well, at least that's what they'd like us to be. Core PPI uh, also at 0.2%, exactly what we were expecting. So what does this mean? This means inflation is what we thought it was going to be. It hasn't magically spiked, despite some fear mongering out there. And more people are unemployed. So the economy is heading for what? The great big recession. It's coming slowly, but steadily. It is coming. That's what I've been saying for a while now. Uh, the four-week jobless claims average has ticked up a little bit. 6,000 continuing jobless claims are um, they're still... Fairly low, uh, you must you must admit. Let me just move this over a little bit so you can see the full data. Um, the core PPI year on year that is fairly irrelevant. We we'll just look at the month's numbers. But yeah, this number here is good for the market, bad for people with jobs. And core PPI is just just kind of neutral. What's a neutral color? Yellow. It's just kind of like it's a non-event. It's a total non-event which is good. Let's have a look at the, how the S&P has reacted to this live here. And yeah, it's a non-event, 0.01% up. Uh, the Qs, the QQQs, the three Qs, the Nasdaq is up a third of a point, but not very much since we got the data out. We are up less than 0.1 points. <laughs> it's really nothing at all. So, but that's helpful. It, it, it means we're not falling off a cliff. It means the recession story is there. Inflation is where it's meant to be. I did a video yesterday saying I thought inflation was actually more like 0%. And I, I appreciate some people are saying, well, go to my grocery store. True, but your grocery store isn't the entire US economy in terms of inflation, right? It's a factor. I get that. And, and personally, for 25 months, wages have gone up by less than inflation. So yeah, totally. In salaried US workers have been absolutely screwed and continue to get absolutely screwed. Uh, what can you do about it? Seriously, build another income stream. You cannot rely on the US government uh, to do this for you or to somehow fix your problems. They won't. They don't care. They really only care about special interest. Uh, talking of Jamie Dillon there uh, earlier on, Wall Street donates $3 billion a year to your officials, your elected Muppets in Washington. And um, we're obviously in the peak season for Muppetness. Uh, if you watched uh, Donald Trump's CNN thing, fairly entertaining. I mean, he's just Loathe him or like him, but you have to admit the man is a PR genius, right? He's just figured out whoever shouts the loudest, it doesn't matter what you shout, gets the most press coverage and therefore wins. And I think that's the way it's going to go. But that's just my view on that. Let me know um, uh, your questions. Good morning to everybody. Stephanie, Rick, Dave, Andrea, Peter, Adam, Mike, uh, Felix. Uh, you could hit the like button. Uh, that's fully within your agency. Indeed, you do have control over some things. It's destroying a like button is certainly one of those. And I would truly appreciate that. This channel would truly appreciate that. And the algorithm will be duped into thinking that this chap here on the screen 
uh, with a strange cravat actually knows a thing or two about finance. So inflation, flat. Unemployment is up. 22,000 more Americans are, uh, are unemployed than in the previous week. Uh, so that's, that's well above expectations. And that means the Fed has started to make an impact in making Americans unemployed, which is, is, is sort of their, their mission, their credo. Uh, the futures are pretty flat. Let's have a look at uh, oil is down half a point. Gas is down a little bit. The dollar is up 0.3%, which is a little bit peculiar, isn't it? Why is the dollar up? doesn't make a lot of sense, but the market doesn't always make a lot of sense. If you want to see the um, pre-market heat map, here it is. This is... Hang on, this was yesterday. This is pre-market. <laughs> it's nothing's happened, basically. Apart from Google flying 2% up this morning, absolutely nothing at all has happened. What's down here? What's TF? Some health stock. Disney down 5%. Yes, Disney raked, uh, well, they, they increased their prices for their subscriptions pretty drastically, and they lost about 2% of subscribers. So the market doesn't like it. So there is Disney, one of those indebted Goliaths, a bit like the U.S. government, really. According to Trump, the U.S. government uh, should go bankrupt. That might be an option. Well, he's been there a few times. He knows the advantages of that process. Uh, I don't think that's an option available to the U.S. government. Uh, sorry to say. Signify, good morning to you, Eric. Good morning to you. Uh, Dave says, um, hitting the like button makes the market go up. There's a disclaimer as well. I appreciate that. Uh, seeing Polestar earnings? No, not yet. I know they're out, but I haven't seen them yet. Let's, let's have a look. Let's have a look. PSNY. haven't gone through them yet. Q1 is, is a summary. This is, by the way, not a substitute for reading the real earnings. Revenue for the quarter ended $546 million. A um, little bit lower than expected, it seems. But there are not that many analysts that cover that stock. So I don't know how useful that is. But it is up 20% year on year. And the loss is narrowed to just one cent. That's pretty dramatic. That's pretty positive. And they expect 2022 global volumes to 60 to 70,000 um, compared to prior projections. Um, cost cutting efforts. I like it. I like a cost cutting effort. You know, that's one of the wonderful things. Um, how's the stock reacting to this? 4.5% down pre market. Well, it's a little volatile here, isn't it? Uh, it at one point went up, but I like a, I, I like a recession because it makes stupid companies and Polster is not a stupid company. I like the product a lot, but it makes companies be careful and conscientious with money, and it means that they are respecting the dollar more um, and look at all the tech layoffs and all that stuff. Right, Google getting rid of Staples, all those kind of important decisions. And I wish we had that for U.S. politicians. I wish we wish we could lock them into a room and say it's a recession now, and unless you shave spending off, well, you're not getting lunch. I think that would actually have an impact. And then if they don't hit that target, then you take away dinner, and then you take away the cigars. Um, and, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I think I think you might actually have an impact there if you did that. Maybe we did that for the summer recess, sort of 90 days of a, a fat camp in Washington. And depending on how much money you cut and how much waste and regulation you get rid of, uh, the more food you get. Sort of like a big brother type thing. What do you think? Is that a good idea? I think it's a brilliant idea. Just came up with it. Good morning, everybody. Appreciate it. Um, Alan is getting better at forecasting. Very unlikely. Um, analysts, okay. If you're an investment bank, and we shan't, we shan't, we shall, the investment bank shall rename blame, nameless. But if you're an investment bank and you have an investment banking team, and what do they do? They do IPOs and they issue bonds and capital and restructure and do all those things, acquisitions for a particular client. Now, that particular client also would like the same investment bank to promote their shares and sell them to institutional investors. Now, for that, you need an analyst report. Now, if you talk to an investment bank, they will say to you that the analyst is completely unbiased and independent from the investment banking team and the, say, $100 million this bank gets paid every year by, by the client has zero impact on the way the analyst report is written. 
<laughs> they expect you to believe that. So this Chinese wall theory is just is, is basically the way industry works. So analysts essentially get paid. That's the way it works. Brendan, a good morning to you. Uh, Duncan, yes, Kathy Woods uh, remains inexplicable to me. I, I just don't really understand it. I, I understand buying a good technology company and holding it forever after. I understand that concept. I don't really understand the actively traded approach to it and, and getting out after bad news and getting back in after good news. It's kind of like sell low, buy high. <laughs> Maybe she spent too much time with her investors. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. What does make some sense to me is if you go to felixfriends.org slash group, uh, you can actually see my trading protocol. It's posted in there. I was going to delete it, but I thought I'd leave it in there for another two days. So hop in over there today, felixfriends.org slash group, and then um, you can just ping me a message or uh, you can find it yourself, but just ping me a message in, in the group and I'll, I'll send it to you so you can get it. It's a six page document, um, essentially how I find 80% probability traits and everything else. So get your pause on that. It's completely free, felixfriends.org slash group. So Google I/O event sent the stock ripping. Yeah, what's that about? I didn't I didn't see that event. That was not on my calendar. Are they allowed to do that without putting it in my diary? Uh, YouTube looks to use, used to look NFL Sunday tickets a little big brands away from TV. NVIDIA picks and shovels lead on AR gold rush. Oh, okay, more, more good news on N N NVIDIA there. We look at the stock screen I hear this morning. Let's look at the extended hours. Oh, if I Mullen's up 7%, I'm sorry to say. Robin Hood is up almost 4%. Talk of um, greed in competence and um, manipulation. Uh, Roblox up 2.5%, Google up 2.4%, Flying, Barber up 2.3%, Palantir up 2.3%, above $10 and staying there. That was the resistance line, $10, the way I was looking at it. That's not financial advice. Uh, AMD up 1.3%, um, but Trump's back up 1.1%, but he did plug that pretty shamelessly on CNN yesterday. You have to give it to him. The man's a salesperson. Uh, Amazon up 0 0.6, Nike up half a point, Nvidia up half a point to 290, Meta up half a percentage point. What isn't up? I think that's probably the real question. Neo up a quarter percent. Anything down? Well, Pack West Bank. Yeah, I posted that in the channel this morning. I said the channel, the community. If you're part of our Patreon community, Felix Frenzelog slash Patreon, you would have seen this already. This one here, uh, this morning. Um, they are down again, Pack West. Um, and Blackstone, that's an interesting story. I mean, that would be, would be worth doing a whole video on, actually, if, if people were interested in that. Blackstone is looking to be the bailer outer of all the, the small banks that have been bankrupted. So Blackstone will lend money to the banks. They will fu funnel and, and, and essentially take their treasury loans and their loan book. They'll move that loan book to insurers and the insurers will pay Blackstone a commission for that. So Blackstone is just kind of like the Weasley middleman who, who make a killing in the process. Why? Because Blackstone has basically managed to take over the US Treasury Department. They're like right at the heart of it. They're running the thing, essentially. So it's pretty bizarre. But yeah, PacWest, if you thought that um, short sellers are to blame, don't believe the headlines. Short. Why do people short a bank like PacWest? Because it's a crappy poorly managed bank with incompetent management who don't understand hedging and they've got an appallingly poor product. That's why people short it. It's not because people can short it. That's not the reason. We don't short grade stocks, right? No one really, I mean, I don't short anything ever. I think it's a crazily risky thing to do. But yeah, you're going to get your hands on some of the morning goodies and, 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 and research and free dig micro degrees and everything else. Go to felixfrenz.org slash Patreon. Join us. It's 50 cents a day. What do you think Blackstone's plants are in the Ukraine? Uh, probably to buy it. <laughs> um, Google said AI will be introduced into search. It's about time. Um, it's about time. Maybe I, I no longer have to go to ChatGPT to find things. ChatGPT has been connected apparently to the internet. 
to the internet. They now have access to the world wide web with all its uh, you know features. Whereas before it was always like, uh, the data I have is two years old, so don't ask me anything recent. So that's a, that's a big one. This, this space is gonna be really interesting. Mike, you go profit on pollen? Yeah, that's nice. What's your plan with that? What, what's your exit plan? Always have a written exit plan. You own a stock. You need to write down why you bought it, and you need to write down when are you going to sell it on the profit and on a loss. Write it down. Have a little notebook or something like that. Phil, good morning to you. Um, Jason, does uh, Kathy Woods making buying policy making me, me scared? No, I don't think she has the sort of Jim Cramer touch necessarily in fairness to her. I just think um, interest rates went up 5% in the last year. Therefore, growth stocks should have fallen about 50%. Okay, they fell a bit more. We got a bit too carried away. People got a little bit too exuberant last year and a lot of things that people were buying. And, and I was saying, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. It doesn't make any money. I don't understand the technology. Therefore, I'm not buying it. Uh, and that's not to say that I was right. I might be wrong, go five years down the road, but if I still don't understand that, I still won't buy it. So growth stocks needs a longer time horizon. You know, it doesn't work as you run into a recession. Um, some of you guys, the parliamentarians are here uh, in, in, in full, full force. I appreciate you. I'm glad you're excited. Uh, the AI stuff is an interesting story. But be warned, they're saying we're not making any money out of it, right? We still haven't seen the Ukraine money that we were promised. So I think there's a little bit of like, I know they just want to take over. They just want to get bigger. And they have this sort of private equity mentality of just like, well, we've got $2.9 billion in cash. We've got 36% free cash flow margin. So we don't really need to charge people anymore. Let's just get market share, market share, market share. I think that's very much the vision. Um, the question is just like, how long does that vision go on for? At some point, investors are going to want to see cash on the table, not one cent per share, like a little bit more than that, right? I'd like to see Kathy's notebook. I, I, I'd, I'd pay I'd pay a lot of money to see that notebook. Maybe it's just sort of scribbles or something. I, I, I don't know what it is. Uh, if you have any questions, pop it out. So it looks like the metaverse is dead already. I don't wouldn't write it off quite yet. I just think it's probably scaled back in this kind of recessionary period. I, I still think there is some serious money in that, especially in the game sector, which is typically okay. Great technology starts in games and in pornography. That's unfortunately the sad truth of it, right? So that's probably where the metaverse is living at the moment. But at some point, it'll 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 come to the rest of the world. Think of what's happened to Street View. Do you remember Google Earth when that came out? And I was like, oh my god, let's go and look at this city and go down the road. It's amazing, right? And now you can basically walk into practically every shop in the U.S. without having ever having to go there. Now imagine if you connected that to the metaverse, where you could actually walk into the shop and you could start shopping. Right, it would have your measurements and that kind of stuff. So I think there is a commercial aspect there, but we're not quite there yet. And Peter, you're quite right. Microsoft is is that you know giant mon mon monopoly uh, with with the evil leader with Bill Gates, uh, well former 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 leader, current evil. Um, and yes, absolutely, they just got market share, market share, market share. Uh, and, and it still works. And the product is still so-so. It's not great. It never has to be great. It's just everywhere, right? My computer runs on it. Most of the software we use is, 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 is Microsoft. You kind of can't really avoid the bloody thing. Um, and it works. And it's an incredible business. I love owning the stock. Slightly loathe the product, but love owning the stock. So the market doesn't seem to be care about an increasing probability of US default. Well, except for the credit derivative market, which is basically saying that the US is now a banana republic. By the way, I got rid of my chair. I am sitting on a, on a bouncing ball, seriously. Um, so I'm gonna be doing this for the rest of the video. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I think it's just better for you. I think it's just better. You just end up moving around a lot more and stuff um, and it looks a little bit quirky. And, and also you can balance it on your knees, which is what I do. Um, I shan't demonstrate that because that'd probably fall off. But um, yeah, my market defaults, I, I, I mean, if you watched Trump yesterday and, and, and him saying, well, we should just let the U.S. default if, if, if Democrats don't give us massive 
tax cuts, uh, sorry, spending cuts. He meant tax cuts, but he said spending cuts. Um, that is obviously a really bad idea. <laughs> and I think he knows that too, but it makes for a great headline. Uh, so I do think down the road, um, whoever's negotiating this will get you know an extra billion dollars for um, the people who elect them. That's generally the way the US corrupt system works. You basically buy votes. You buy the votes of the uh, congressmen and senators by buying the votes of the people who, people who elect them, right? That's normally the way it works. So there'll be some sort of horrible muddled bill that just shoves a load of money into a load of things that nobody needs and pushes, probably kicks the can down the road for a year. I think that's probably what's going to happen. Uh, Brendan, um, Disney down 6%. Yes, yeah, not really theme parks. I don't think that's really the problem. I think the problem is just is the subscription business. Um, we care very much with Disney about subscription and they increase the prices, but 2% of subscribers canceled. Canceled. So, yeah, that's not ideal. Disney is not really a stock I like. I just has too much debt. I don't like the theme parks from an investor point of view. As an individual, I really actually really enjoy Disney. But um, yeah, it's not a great business, I would say. Um, I don't think theme parks really are great businesses. You have to make sure that the subscription revenue, they're a part of a, of a branding exercise, right? So you create this blockbuster film series, you put it in the parks, it gets people more excited, they buy more junk, they go and then subscribe to your uh, TV programs. And, and, and keep giving you money regularly. That's sort of like the, the, the funnel of it, but it's a pretty capital intensive way of doing it. So many employees at Disney. I know, I mean, you know, Mickey Mouse wants really, really high salaries. It's a problem, right? So what's a good buy today, says Keith. Well, it's, I think that always depends on data and I would highly recommend that you base your decisions on data. Uh, we've got a little um, sheet for that, for example, which is, our stock tracker. Let me load it up for you, something like that. So you can literally put in anything you want in here. So we put Disney at the top here as a stock ticker. We hit the update button. Let me zoom in a bit for you. And then it pulls up Walt Disney and, and everything else and obviously competitors. And you can have a look at like, you know, it's the margin good. Look at, find some competitors. Uh, what's the return on equity? It's three and a half percent. It's appalling. You give Disney a hundred dollars and they make $3.50 extra a year out of that. <laughs> Why bother? Why bother? Honestly, um, PE forward PE is looks promising. Um, five, the last five years, their sales have grown eight and a half percent. Okay, there was a pandemic in the middle of that. I get that, and earnings per share have actually tumbled twenty one percent over the last five years, up fifty seven percent the last year. So you have to look at this a little bit more more detail. But what I would do is I would pop in some competitors here. And then you can start looking at that kind of data and have a quick comparison of like, you know, who's actually better in this sector. And then from that point onwards, start reading some earnings reports and so on. And this is all part of the, the Patreon. Go to felixfrenz.org slash Patreon and you'll find it inside. Um, <laughs> Will VIX die? Well, VIX doesn't really die. VIX is just, an, it's just a, a fear measure. At some point, it'll come back up. It's inevitable that something breaks again at some point. You think Epstein is dead? Really? That's, a, that's, a, that's an interesting subject, isn't it? It's a can of worms. I, I, I think he's alive and well and probably somewhere in a Central or South America, um, um, possibly with a little bit of plastic surgery. Uh, marrying Disney with Meta could be beneficial. Ooh, but all that debt in, into Meta? No. No, 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 don't do that. You, you don't mix like a capital intensive business like that with tech. The beauty in tech is, I'll show you on here. So the first is Disney. The next is Meta, right? Let's uh, hit the update button on this. So the sheet is available in the, in the, in the Patreon. It's like 50 cents a day. So for much, much more, of course. So Gross margin, Disney, 33%. Meta, 78%. If I give Disney $100, they, give, they create $3.50 value a year. Meta, $17 value. And that's going to increase because they're cutting costs uh, significantly. Disney's share price is 1,900 times free cash flow. 
right? Uh, Meta, 34 times, which is a little bit better than Tesla. And um, debt, Meta has very, very little. Disney has rather a lot. Earnings per share, the last five years at Meta, 8% growth per year. Disney, minus 20% per year. So why would you mix the two? You would just create like a really average business. We don't like average around here. But it's a, you know, it's a fun thing to play with, to start to understand industries and how they're different. So medium term, are you still bearish, uh, says Duncan? Well, um, I'm an optimist and I, I, I think I can always make money in every market, but I'm looking at unemployment creeping up in the US, 5% in interest rates sticking around, officially still high inflation, although I believe that or not, but it'll be an excuse to keep interest rates higher. A completely inept government uh, that's burying the country in debt and sending most of your money to conflicts around the world that you are not particularly involved in or don't particularly care about. And um, massive social problems and, and people getting worried and scared and, and therefore spending less money. That's kind of like, I think, where the US economy is right now. That doesn't mean it's going to be like that forever or it's the end of the world or, or, or any of that. And then you look at the stock market and you're like, pretty high valuations, markets flat. There is no fear. There's no panic. Um, banks fail and everyone's like, it was only a little one. It was only the third bank. That failed. Oh, JP Morgan saved us. So it's all good. And it makes me think that we are a little bit blase about the whole thing. And we just think, well, the government's going to bail us out, aren't they? Well, how are they going to bail us out? They're going to create more debt, right? So yeah, I think, I think structurally, there's some serious problems there. And I also think that earnings are going to take a hit. Consumers are spending less. Credit card delinquencies are up. Um, the cost of a truck a second-hand truck has dropped from $145,000 to $80,000. Why does it do that? Because real businesses are somewhat in trouble. They're not buying trucks, right? So for me, there are lots and lots of data points that make me think, I kind of feel like I've been here before and everyone's just like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's all going to be great. You don't understand. It's all different this time. It's AI. AI will fix it all. And I think AI will be amazing. And I think it will make good companies a lot more profitable. I think margins will go up. But I kind of think we're going to have to go through a little bit of this. But that's just my, my view on it. See, and, and that's another problem here, Jerome. Right? I mean, mini, mini mass, you know, no retirement. It's been working for, what, 130 years or something and still no pension. They're going to break something. Well, I think with the interest rates, you have to think about if the Fed keeps interest rates at 5%, right? They, they know they're going to break the economy. I mean, Jay Powell, you might think he's an idiot, but he's not. He worked at um, Carlyle Group, right? Huge private equity uh, fund, massive asset manager, $360 billion under management. Um, the guy is an investment banker by heart and a lawyer. Okay. Can't hold that against him. Uh, he's not an economist. I'm an economist and a lawyer, so I know how you know idiotic both of those groups are. And he's also a Republican. So the question is, um, you know, what's the motivation here for really killing off the U.S. economy? Well, it certainly will get you a new president, or well, maybe not a new one, but a, but an old new one, if you know what I mean. So that could be a conspiracy theory that right there and then. It just seems baffling to me that a group of sm smart people with good education and access to all the economists in the world and, you know, Stanford and Harvard and all these guys printed 40% extra US dollars in the space of a year and believed that that wouldn't cause inflation. Like, I don't buy it because... I studied economics. I mean, even my, my, my like high school economics in, in, in the UK, even that taught you that money supply equals inflation and, and velocity and that that would take 18 months to actually show up in the data. And it's the same with interest rates. And, and somebody came out and said, well, let's rewrite that 300 years of economic history and, and, and research and call it new monetary mumbo jumbo and, and, and say, no, we can print as much money as we like and it doesn't cause inflation. And then 18 months later, they were like, 
We've got inflation, um, but it's transitory and it's got nothing to do with money printing. Um, I blame the Chinese. And you're like, what? <laughs> right? So that's where we are now. So now they've raised, raised interest rates at the fastest rate ever by five percentage points, knowing full well that it takes 18 months for that to show up in the data because interest rates go up. But doesn't mean that like your home loans or your car loans immediately go up, right? Because they might be fixed for a period of time. So it takes time to work its way through the system. And they know that. I know that. Like, you know, 10th graders know that. So it makes me always think, well, who's, who's behind this? Who's profiting from this? And if you think about like, you know, where is Jay Powell going to go after he's finished here? Back to Carlisle Group or, you know, JP Morgan or some hedge fund or, you know, nice speeches. Like who's benefiting from this? The money printing made all the asset rich people and the asset rich funds and banks much, much richer, much, much richer because it was the everything bubble. All assets prices went up. And now what's inflation doing? Well, it's kneecapping those with a lot of debt and, and kind of a slightly weak business who were daring to compete with the big boys on Wall Street. So you can say maybe I you know look into this too much, but I just always follow the money flow. Like who is profiting from this situation? And that's where I point my finger. And then I think about well, how can I profit from that? Because those guys will do well. And I mean, I watched Jamie Dillon on Bloomberg just before this, and it was it was a comedy show. I mean, it really was. Um, he does put up a pretty good poker face, I must say. Most great bankers and uh, traders are actually good poker players. So that's kind of the way I look at that. Now, moving on. Could the rate hikes be a prevention of coming stagflation? No, they could cause. Well, okay, if you if you thought that inflation was genuinely entrenched and um, there was only one way to squash it, then yes, rates should stay higher for lower. But the supply chain inflation that was caused artificially during COVID by madness and po policy, that's gone away. AI will definitely reduce the cost of producing stuff, right? I mean, Twitter got rid of, what, 90% of its workforce? It's still there. You can do that with a lot of businesses, sorry to say. HR functions, admin, back office, you know, all that stuff, you can basically get rid of it or strip it down by 90%. And that's, I think, again, something to think about if you work in a field like that where you're dealing with like a lot of data or something that's somewhat repetitive or administrative, uh, you're not going to be needed at some point. And, and you're going to have to learn it's not a skill where you can be reliant on yourself rather than the employer. So that's going to be good for business, not so good for those employees, obviously. So you know, where is this inflation coming from? Oil prices are down, gas prices are down, like, you know, the Germans didn't freeze to death last winter, all that stuff, it didn't happen, did it? And therefore, like, where, why, why, why do we have inflation? Money printing. Take the money out, you'd have no inflation. We'd have stagnation and, and, and probably deflation. You want the ECP to raise rates. Well, the Brits just raised their interest rates today. Um, and again, they're saying, well, they're, we're going to have to do more. So again, it makes you think, well, why? Okay, the UK has some trade tensions that are somewhat inflationary. But fundamentally, they have a labor shortage, right? That's why there is inflation in the UK. Like I've got friends in the UK. They employ thousands of people and they can't get staff. Why not? Because before, there was a much larger pool of cheaper labor from Europe, Eastern Europe, let's face it. And that's no longer available after Brexit. And that's government policy. They didn't want uncontrolled immigration. And I get that. That's not usually a particularly good thing. But they need to like come up with a plan to let in the people that they want, right? That's kind of what they need to do. And they need to do that fairly aggressively. So that's what's causing inflation there. Across Europe, it's money printing again. Money printing, money printing, money printing, right? The European money printing was, in a sense, worse than what the US did because they they bought so many like privately held corporate bonds. Um, Robin, appreciate the, uh, the, the 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 token there. It's very kind of you. 
right, guys, any questions, pop them into the chat. Otherwise, make sure you pop over to our Patreon community here, phoenixrents.org slash Patreon. You can also get your hands on my trading script. Um, it's a six-page document in the Facebook group, phoenixrents.org slash group. I will take it down because I'm kind of I kind of meant to. This stuff isn't really meant to be circulated publicly. phoenixrents.org slash group. Hop into the group. Just say, ping me a message and say, where is the script? Where is it? Where is it? And now I'll ping it to you. Uh, and you can you can definitely see like my process from that and, and, and how I trade and how I do what I do. I appreciate um, you tuning in very much. Uh, subscribe to the channel. We are live every single morning and um, typically also do roundups and everything else that's going on there. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.